This always happens right before Twin Flame Union. And uh, we need to talk about what to not do, too, when this starts to happen. Hmm. Because uh, it's easy to get sucked back into old cycles. Let's face it, with your twin flame, everything's going good. And then you get sucked back into old cycles and they take off running again. And I haven't even really explained exactly what that means or what that looks like. But already you guys, you kind of get it. You kind of get what I mean by that. You see the patterns and I want to help you avoid that uh, in today's video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kurt. I am the world's number one twin flame coach. I have personally coached over 6,000 paying twin flame coaching students to date. I've overseen thousands of unions. I've got students on my YouTube channel who are married to their twin flame, having spiritual breakthroughs, manifesting abundance, living the life of their dreams, all over the place, left and right. Yes, I'm bragging, and I think I should brag, and it's for your benefit. Guys, you need to know somebody figured it out. I want your suffering to end. That's what I want. I want you to live the life of your dreams and I want you to get what you need out of this twin flame connection. That's what I'm all about, guys. And here's the thing that you're going to find out today after watching this video. My coaching is very, very different in a fundamental way. That's why it's so effective. This is a back to basics approach to spirituality, no healing, no clearing your chakras, no clearing your karma, no fixing your inner child, no mirror exercise. And I'm not saying that those things are necessarily bad. That's just not what this journey is all about. Now let's talk about twin flames first, about what I'm talking about when I am talking about twin flames. And then once we're on the same page, then the rest of the stuff is going to make sense to you. You know, what happens right before reunion, what kind of pitfalls to avoid, uh, just like the title of the video said. Let's talk about Twin Flames, guys. Let's talk about what they are first. Now, what's interesting is everybody on the internet has a different idea about what to do about your Twin Flame, right? Everybody's got a different point of view, different instructions. You got to do the mirror exercise. You got to get some past life regression done, you got to work on your inner child, you got to do all this healing, and that's all good stuff, but it just doesn't seem to work with your twin flame, does it? And it's kind of like the harder you do that stuff, the harder they run. And then if you tell people that, they go, oh, well, you just need to do even more healing. Hmm, interesting. Now, what's interesting, and I'm not trying to put anybody down, it's just, it's like that, right? I was there, you're there, you're trying to figure it out. And you're looking at me, by the way, and you're thinking, well, you're just another guy on the internet. Well, watch this. I'm not just another guy on the internet. The one thing everybody agrees on when it comes to Twin Flames, everybody across the board, is that it's one soul in two bodies. Everybody you talk to, they're all going to have a different way of saying that. You know, it's like the soul splits and you've been searching for the other half of your soul or... You're the same soul vibration or something along those lines, right? Like you were the same soul. Everybody agrees on that. So what's the problem? Think about it. If everybody agrees about what twin flames are, why does everybody have a different approach? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Now, I'm here to let you know somebody already figured it out. And you can tell somebody already figured it out. Mm hmm very interesting. It's the words that we're using, separation, union, detaching. We're using those words. But did you ever stop and think, why do we use those words? And why is it that only twin flames are using those words? Where did those words come from? Hmm, hmm. And I made a video specifically about that. We're going to touch on that briefly in this video today, too. Guys, somebody already figured this out. I don't know who it was, but it's like you can see their fingerprints all over the Twin Flame community. And everybody is like way, like strayed far, far away from the original teaching, which actually when you distill it is nothing more than transcendentalism. Your Twin Flame is your soul. You got to do soul stuff. That's it. 
That's all it is. And everybody else has got you doing all this mind stuff, the mirror exercise, fixing your inner childhood wounds. You know, that's psychology and metaphysics. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that's not soul stuff. That's mind stuff. Body, mind, soul. Okay, check this out. So, not reinventing the wheel. I'm not making any, anything new here. This is all old stuff. We already know this stuff, right? What is reincarnation? Right? Like past lives. We already know this stuff. This is ancient. This is thousands of years old. This doesn't even have anything to do with twin flames. If I take away this, right? If I take away this, it's just... I mean, I've seen lots of other spiritual teachers actually even use this diagram. This is your higher self in what they call heaven or the energy part of the universe in science, which we're going to talk about in just a second. We're going to talk about science. This is real, guys. Twin flames. This is real. You're not crazy. <laughs> this is real. I met my twin flame. She's permanently in my life. Mm? I figured this all out. I cracked the code. Okay. So in physics, they call it the field, right? They, they used to call it the ether, but you're not allowed to use that word anymore. It's like, it's like taboo. It's like bad form to say ether in the science community these days. But uh, the field, the quantum field, the energy part of the universe, uh, dark energy, dark matter, you know, the void, right? It's energy. It's energy. And it's pure energy. It's not like electricity, where you can like measure it. It's like metaphysical or something. So that's where your higher self exists on that higher plane, right? Now, these are all representing individual incarnations of your soul. So this is, we're just going to say in the year 1770, this is 1880, this is you and your twin flame, and then this is your future reincarnation, right? Guys, that's all this is. That's all this is. You are simultaneous incarnations of the same soul. You and your twin flame. This is like we already know this stuff. Right? Real straightforward. Real straightforward, guys. Now, what's interesting is when you have simultaneous incarnations of the same soul in the same space, right? So time and space, it's the same thing. I mean, you can... You met your twin flame in the flesh, right? You, you saw them, you touched them, you shook their hand, you kissed them, you did whatever. Some of you met online, but you know they're real, you know. When you have two incarnations of the same soul in the same space, it does create a polarization at the mental level. And this diagram represents something that I realized myself. And then I, I, you can kind of see it in some of the other teachings that you see on the internet about Twin Flames, some of them, right? Some of them, not all of them. But um, then they add a bunch of, you know, like new age woo-woo gobbledygook, a bunch of dogmatic stuff that just weighs you down and slows you down and bogs you down. And you don't need that stuff. But this is true. You are polarized at the level of the mind. Remember, body, mind, soul. We're going to break this all down. So stick with me. So this is how our universe functions. Albert Einstein called it relativity. right? Like the opposites. This and that. Plus and minus. Up and down. Hot and cold. Past and future. Right here and there. Bigger, smaller. Uh, this object has... More intense gravity, this object over here has less intense gravity, right? Relativity. And then where the universe came from is something called a singularity, where there is no opposite. There is nothing opposite to it. It's a complete breakdown of relativity. It's the complete breakdown of the universe as we know it, right? Mathematics as we, numbers don't work anymore. You can't even write the number zero. It's singularity, okay? Now, in spiritualism, same kind of system, same kind of setup. So duality, this yin and yang symbol, that, that's the mind. The mind works on duality and the whole rest of the universe too. I mean, ancient Zen spiritual teachers have been teaching this stuff for ages, thousands of years, guys. And it's like science is just now starting to catch up, right? 
But the mind, it's the same thing. The mind works on duality. Even a psychologist will tell you that, right? Like, I like it, I don't like it. I feel good, I feel bad, right? Emotions, thoughts, I agree, I disagree, it's past, it's future. Concept, right? That's the mind, mental, emotional. Also metaphysical, I think you could call it more accurately the astral body, right? The astral body is the metaphysical component of the three-part triune being, body, mind, soul. So the black is the body, and then the colored part here is the, is the astral body, including chakras, thoughts, emotions, metaphysical energy. That's like the aura, like people that can see an aura. And this little cloud, this is supposed to be my little representation of your soul, your higher self, right? Which was this circle in this diagram. Okay, and then, uh, so that's body, mind, soul. So we've talked about the mind and the body. We don't really need to go there. You kind of know what that is, right? You're, you're sitting there in your chair. You know what the body is. Interesting, in spiritualism, source... It's always been referred to as non-duality, a, a, a monad, at the one, right? The one, not duality, not yin and yang, but the one, the great I am, which is what you are at your very core. That's where we are all one. We are all one at the source, but... That's the very deepest level. If you go a level up, you could say, that's the soul. That's where we all become individualized, holographic, um, fractal representations of the great I am, right? Which is what you call a soul. And you and your twin flame are the exact same soul vibration. You have the exact same soul frequency, if you will, right? You are one soul. So that's where you are only your twin flame. Okay. And this, again, I'm not, this isn't my idea. I want to be clear about that in this video. This isn't my theory. This is ancient Zen spiritualism. This is right out of the Tao or the Bhagavad Gita, Buddha, Jesus, ancient Christianity, Paramahansa Yogananda, Krishnamurti, right? Hare Krishna, right? Eckhart Tolle, modern day guys. Uh, Rupert Spira, Charlotte Chaco Beck, Alan Watts, right? This is, this is old hat. And some of you might be new to this spiritualism stuff. What I'm telling you is the reason I've been able to crack the code on Twin Flames so effectively is I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm not bringing in all this new agey dogmatic stuff. And I'm not trying to put anybody down. I know everybody's just trying to help, but they're, they're not helping. <laughs> you keep going through the same cycles. Remember, we talked about that. And it's because they've got you doing all this psychological stuff, like inner childhood work. That's psychology, guys. And that's good stuff, but that's not what this journey is. Remember, your twin flame is your soul. Your twin flame is your soul. They call it unity consciousness. Union, unity consciousness. Again, right out of the Zen playbook, guys. Right out of the Zen playbook. Unity consciousness is when you transcend the separation consciousness of ego mind. So again, the ego mind, it says, I'm here. You're over there, right? There's me and there's they. There's me and there's other. That makes a we. We are two. We are separate. I am me and you are you. And that makes a we, right? We are separate beings. And that's all the ego mind can do because the ego mind is duality, yin and yang. There's me and there's that out there. It's externalized because it works on duality, right? And they call that separation consciousness in ancient Zen spiritualism. That word is not really a twin flame terminology and neither is detaching because when you transcend transcendentalism, not reinventing the wheel, 
ancient Zen spiritualism, that's all this is. When you transcend the ego mind, the separation consciousness, the separate self, the ego mind, this history of who I am. I'm a mom, I'm a brother, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm a teacher, I'm a liberal conservative, I like these things, I don't like those things, I am me, you are you. It's a history, a story, a personality, the ego, right? And I'm not saying that's bad, that's just what that is. But when you transcend that, you are remembering who you really are. You are consciousness. You are not duality. You are the non-duality being. You are consciousness. It's like, if you ever said to yourself, why am I thinking this thought? Or why am I having this feeling? Right. You, you're aware that there's thinking and feeling going on. But what is the awareness? What is that? What is consciousness? Pure consciousness is not thought. It's not thought. You can't think your way into consciousness. The ego mind thinks that it can. Right. What is consciousness? It's like, what am I beyond the body? And you're going to go, I know I'm a soul. Right. And that's a conceptual explanation, thought, the mind, concept. Hmm? But what is the soul really? It experiences. It's, it is the awareness of thinking and emotion itself. It's pure being, pure consciousness. That's your soul, guys. That's your twin flame. That's where you are them. There's only you. You and your twin flame. There's not two of you. There's not we. There's only you. There's only you. You are your twin flame. You are them. Okay, so you transcend the separation consciousness of ego mind, the old false sense of self, the identity entity, the story, the history, right? You transcend that separation consciousness, that separate self, and you enter unity consciousness. Ancient Zen spiritualism, thousands of years old, not necessarily twin flames, N not even twin flames. I think what happened is like in the 1970s, 1980s, somebody figured this out already. And that's why everybody online today is using those words, separation, union, and detaching. So you enter unity consciousness and that's detaching when you do that. When you leave behind separation consciousness, you enter unity consciousness, union, that's detaching. And guys, that's right out of ancient Zen spiritualism. Not the new agey woo-woo healing stuff <laughs> on the internet. I'm not sorry for saying it, guys. That's not really spiritual. And again, I know everybody's just trying to help, but it's, it's not helping. <laughs> it's not helping. It's making things worse. Because you're stuck in like, I got to fix things. I got to fix myself. I'm broken and I need healing. And I'm telling you, you're not. You're not. You're whole. The question is, what is you? You're not your mind. You're not the ego. You're not the inner childhood wounds. You can fix that stuff, but you're doing it because you think that'll help you get your twin flame back or you're doing the mirror exercise. That's all psychology, guys. That's mental stuff. And if you approach this, through the mind, they run. Remember, the mind is duality, right? So if you push, they pull away. Your mental, metaphysical, and emotional energy travels to them and pushes them away. Yin, yang, push, pull. You focus on them, they focus on anything but you. You focus on them, they focus on anything but you. The mind is duality. If you work this through the mind, they pull away because you're pushing. Push, pull. Real simple, guys. It's separation consciousness. If you sit there thinking, I am me and they are them, and I need to do something so I can get them, they run harder because you keep approaching it as though they were separate from you. And I'm telling you, the truth is there's only you. There's not two of you. The question is, what is you? What is that? Now, what does this have to do with 
What happens right before union? It's got everything to do with it. You're going to experience oneness with all, even if it's just a fleeting glimpse, even if it's just for a minute or two. You're going to have these very beautiful but inexplicable. An explanation is a thought. That's mental. Mm. You don't need to explain it, but you're going to have this knowing that you're connected to everything. Or you're going to have this knowing that they are your twin flame or that they are you or that you are one. And it's a knowing. It's almost like it's deja vu or something. You know how like deja vu, it's like this weird eerie knowing that I've done this before, right? That's the part I'm talking about is it's the weird eerie knowing. It's just different information. Because in this case, the information is, yeah, I am the trees in the sky and the clouds and the buildings, or I am my twin flame. You feel at one with everything or your twin flame. And here's another thing that happens right before union. You haven't even thought about your twin flame in ages. Now, here's the mistake to not make. When your twin flame comes back in, when they start talking to you again, if you get sucked back into those old cycles of chasing, of I got to figure it out, I got to make sure I'm doing it right, right? The mind, ego, is worried about the outcome and it says, I need to make sure I don't screw this up, right? So you're like paranoid, like, oh, I got to be careful what I do and say, and oh, I got to be mindful of my energy. And I'm over here telling you, you don't need to do any of that. You already are them. You already are your twin flame. It's done. So detaching from your twin flame thus is detaching from your mind. Very interesting. Guys, go watch my other free twin flame coaching videos for more free resources on how you can get started on this. There's a playlist on this channel called The True Twin Flame Teachings. Go check it out. Those are my free coaching videos. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your week.